Okay, so we were doing a, a study on we were doing ourselves a new Bible study on Galatians uh, the end of chapter 4 leading into chapter 5. Now, when we seek this is a re, this is when we seek to interpret a passage like this, we must remember that for the devout and scholarly Jew, now this is important to know, and especially for the rabbis, scripture had more than one meaning, and literal meaning was often regarded as the least important. For the Jewish rabbis, a passage of scripture had four meanings. One, pashat, its simple or literal meaning. Two, ramaz, its suggested meaning. Three, derash, the meaning deduced by investigation, and four, sad, the allegorical meaning. The first letters of these four words, P-R-D-S, are the consonants of the word paradise, and when a man had succeeded in penetrating into these four different meanings, he reached the joy of paradise. It is to be noted that the summit of all meanings was the allegorical meaning. It is therefore often happened that the rabbis would take a simple bit of historical narrative from the Old Testament and read into it inner meanings which often appear to us fantastic, but which were very convincing to the people of their day. Paul was a trained rabbi, and that is what he is doing here with the story involving Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Ishmael, and Isaac. Now, if you remember, uh, just in brief, we'll read Uh, we will read, Tell me this, you who want to be subject to the law. You listen to it being read to you, don't you? Well, then it stands written in it that Abraham had two sons. One was the son of the slave girl, and one was the son of the free woman. But the son of the slave girl was born in the ordinary human way, whereas the son of the free woman was born through a promise. Now, these things are an allegory. For these two women, for these two women stand for two covenants. One of these covenants, the one which originated on Mount Sinai, bears children who are destined for slavery, and that one is represented by Hagar. Now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai, which is in Arabia, and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is a slave, and so are her children. But the Jerusalem which is above is free, and she is our mother. For it stands written, "Rejoice, O barren one who never bore a child! Break forth into a shout of joy!" O you who know not the pangs of bearing a child, for the children of her who was left alone are more than those of her who had a husband. But we brothers are in the same position as Isaac. We are children of promise. So Isaac is the child of promise. But in the old days, the child who was born in the ordinary human way persecuted the child who was born in the spiritual way. And exactly the same thing happens now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave girl and her son. For the son of the slave girl must not inherit with the son of the free woman. With the son of the free woman. When we Paul takes that old story and allegorizes it. Hagar stands for the old covenant of the law made on Mount Sinai, which is in fact in Arabia, the land of Hagar's descendants. Hagar herself was a slave, and all her children were born into slavery. And that covenant, whose basis is the law, turns men into slaves of the law. Hagar's child was born from merely human impulses, and legalism is best that man can do. On the other hand, Sarah stands for the new covenant in Jesus Christ. God's new way of dealing with men, not by law, but by grace. Her child was born, it also stands for the child of promise. Isaac is to best be understood as the child of promise. You could also think of Ishmael as the child of the flesh, as the child of the slave. Uh, her child was born free and according to God's promise, and all his descendants must be free. As the child of the slave girl persecuted the child of the free woman, the children of the law now persecute the children of grace and promise. But as in the end the child of the slave girl was cast out and had no share in the inheritance, 
So in the end, those who are legalists will be cast out from God and have no share in the inheritance of grace. Strange as this all may seem to us, it enshrines one great truth. The man who makes law the principle of his life is in the position of a slave, whereas the man who makes grace the principle of his life is free. For as a great saint put it, the Christian maxim is, love God and do what you like. It is the power of that love and not of the constant of law that will keep us right. For love is always more powerful than the law.